Chance helical pull-down piles can be installed with relatively small equipment. Typical installation equipment is a hydraulic drive head mounted on a skid steer loader, excavator, or backhoe. Helical piles are relatively quick to install and require little or no ground preparation. The excavator operator crowds or applies downward pressure during the installation of the lead section at the beginning to minimize the amount of disturbed earth at the top of the hole. The groundman must assist the operator in keeping the installation plumb. This is very important when installing the lead section in the first plane extension. The operator should be able to see the pile and keep it plumb in his left to right direction, but will need assistance in the front to back direction. After installation of the lead section, a grout reservoir must be installed. The reservoir can have a piece of sauna tube, a plywood box, a piece of pipe, or any other suitable device. Here we'll be using a piece of 12 inch PVC pipe that can be extracted and reused on subsequent piles. It is important that the bottom of the reservoir be neat and clean with no loose dirt. After installation of the grout reservoir, a digger plate is inserted to the lead section prior to adding the first plane extension. Duct tape is used to keep the digger plate in place until it gets to the bottom of the reservoir. The digger plate is typically a 5 inch to 6 inch diameter plate with two paddles welded to the bottom. As the paddle is pulled into the ground, the paddles will force the earth away from the shaft creating a void. After installation of the digger plate, a plane extension is added to extend the pile to the appropriate depth. Before the extension is added, a ball of stiff grout is placed at the top of the previous section. This is referred to as buttering the joint. This will ensure that the joint is completely grouted up. The connection between pieces is a forged male to female connection with a single through bolt. A 12 inch or larger crescent wrench is used to tighten the bolts. Connections should be double checked to ensure that they are positively connected. There are several different methods that grout can be mixed. A high shear mixer, as shown here, is preferred and performs the best. Grout can also be mixed in a mortar mixer, but care must be taken to get a thorough mix. One man should be dedicated to mixing and should always wear a mask. The grout should be the consistency of pancake batter. It should be very flowable with no lumps, but not watery. When the grout is thoroughly mixed, the grout reservoir is then filled. There are a number of methods used to deliver the grout to the reservoir. A grout pump will make your production more efficient, but is not mandatory. A chute made from lumber will work well also, or a wheelbarrow with a spout as shown here also works well to minimize waste. The grout reservoir should be filled to the top so that the same fill level can be repeated. This is so that the amount of grout taken in can be measured or verified. After the grout reservoir is filled, the installation continues. It is important for the groundsman to assist the operator in keeping the pile plumb. The operator should maintain good crowd pressure during the installation to ensure proper advancement of the pile. As the digger plate advances into the ground, it creates a void. The hydraulic head pressure of the dense grout mixture causes the grout to flow behind the digger plate and fill the void as it is created. Thence the name helical pull-down pile. After the installation of the extension section, the grout drop is recorded prior to refilling the reservoir. The data is recorded in the pile log so the grout volume can be verified and compared with the theoretical volume. The process is repeated as necessary until the proper termination torque is achieved. Prior to reaching the maximum torque capacity of the shaft material, you will begin to see a permanent twist or wrap in the steel. This is normal and does not damage the steel. Shaft twist or wrap is a good visual indicator of installation torque. The shaft steel can then be cut off with a portable bandsaw to the proper termination grade. 